What's up, it's Chanel, and today we have a special episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we have a daily demo of the day that's also the daily classic. And this was reissued on Dread Records, and Dread Records are killing it right now. They have some gnarly fucking reissues. There's a sick Zafzer reissue coming out, limited to 100 copies. Sadly, but hopefully I can get my hands on one. It's the black metal Zafzer as well, so it's the fucking good shit. But we have Shades of Night Descending on cassette. Five tracks of East Coast Funeral Doom. And this is a Vulcan in 1994. And in case you did not know, Evoken got their name from uh, their Gothen track of Fantanad Yagsagoth. This demo is fucking amazing. If you've never heard it, definitely check it out. But track number two, Evoken. And this was released in 1991. So fucking good. The reissue, I grabbed this from the Dark Descent site, and uh, I know that The Crypt put it out. 2019 reissue, just based on the purple vinyl. But without their Goffin, you wouldn't have Evoken, so I needed to show this to you, ladies and gentlemen. One of Finland's finest, and in my opinion, one of the most influential bands when it comes to Funeral Doom. Like, how many bands do you think have, you know, used that as an influence? Because, like, here's an example just right here. Excarnated Entity. And it's a killer fucking release. I have the one with the new logo. And like Atramantius even have like, it's not as on the nose, but still. But Evoken used to have this, again, kind of more straight up death metal, black metal logo. Last time I saw them, they were, were selling t-shirts and beanies with the old logo on it. I just got a sticker, but I should have got the fucking t-shirt. And Shades of Night Descending, you know, when you get to the B side of things, the track Towers of Frozen Dusk, there's a lot of black metal elements to it. And you can see with this release, some of the elements that didn't really like, like they fit with this release in perfect context it doesn't feel out of place everything's very organic with shades of night descending as a demo everything just flows and it's devastatingly heavy sad as fuck and everything you could want from funeral doom like i, I really don't know what to say about this besides e essential if you're a fan of the genre like 100 percent it's like with black metal and weakling if you don't like weakling i mean you're really missing out on one of the best united states black metal bands ever but not everybody has 300 dollars for a copy of the vinyl so it is what it is somebody please reissue that shit like I don't know why it doesn't get reissued. I, I don't know if John just doesn't want it to be reissued. I don't ask questions, pretty much. But with this demo, you can hear like certain elements that Evoken just kind of put off to the side as time went on. And when you get to a record like Quietus, like the songwriting began in 1996 and this was released 
originally in 2000. Because my copyright from Peaceville is 2001. And Steve O'Malley from Sun did all the uh, graphic illustrations here. Um, yeah, visual abstracts via Steve O'Malley. All music by Evoke in 1996 to 2000. And then time keeps going on. There's different lineup changes. Avokin, in my opinion, put out one of their best records in Ultramoros. I might have said that wrong, but it's their record before Hypnagogia. And Hypnagogia is Evokin at their most mature and just highest level of songwriting and this record took a long time to write and that's the way you know funeral doom is meant to be you can't rush things when you're a band like evoking it's all about atmosphere it's all about riffs it's all about lyrics and hypnagogia is from what I remember, a story about a World War I soldier awaiting death. I, I forget, it's been a while since I've read the lyrics or even blasted this bad boy, but I know some of you care. And I always thought this was a really nice looking LP. Just very, very fucking sick. But what matters is how it sounds, and it sounds fucking devastating. Because I like when Evoking, they, they don't do it too often, but they'll speed up into like straight up death metal territory. And it's re fucking ridiculous when they do it. Like, I have a video of the last time I saw them live in 2018 where they played um, a new track. And you just hear me go, what the fuck? Like, there's just this ridiculous, like, death metal part they go into, and you just hear my excitement in the video. It's pretty fucking funny, actually. But when it comes to Evoking, hearing where they came from on the Shades of Night Descending demo, and hearing where they're at now with Hypnagogia, it's fucking awesome. Because the only really big difference is I would say the addition of like cellos and more traditional instrumentation instead of just straight up devastating riffs and keyboards and stuff like that, which I think is fine. But Evokin during this time period, and pretty much, that sums up what Evokin sound like to me. That right there is like a perfect photo representation of Evokin's Funeral Doom mastery. Which I feel like they pretty much 99% mastered on... Shades of Night Descending, like, the only thing that sounds remotely different is when they go into the black metal part that's on Towers of Frozen Dusk. And everything else, like, the intro, Engraven Image, Shades of Night Descending, Towers of Frozen Dusk, and Into the Autumn Shade make up this bad boy. And Evokin was during 1994. John Paradiso on guitar and vocals. Nick Orlando on guitar. Bill Manley on bass. And Vincent Verquet on drums. The homie Dave had yet to join at this point in time. But all keyboards were done by John Paradiso and Tim Carlin. Sick fucking shit. I love this demo so fucking much. 
I would love to get the LP, the double LP. It has this demo and another demo, I think. But I know it's a double LP and stuff. I really, I had it in my hand at one point, but I put it back and it is what it is. But Shades of Night Descending, if you want to hear Vokin, if you want to hear a Vokin at their most primitive, but still very dialed in, check out Shades of Night Descending. This is a killer slab of East Coast Funeral Doom. And to me though, it kind of all starts on the East Coast with winter in the darkness, but that's a tale for a different day. I just feel like that kind of vibe started here. And I could be wrong, but like 1988 winter started. This came out in 1994. But they are from the same area, kind of. I'm pretty sure Avokin has some members that lived in New Jersey. I know a lot of them live in Long Island and New York. But still, East Coast Funeral Doom at its finest, Evokin and their 1994 demo, and the daily demo of the day that happens to be a classic Shades of Night Descending. On Dread Records. Let's say you just got into Funeral Doom and you heard Worm's Gloom Lord record and you're wondering some of the influences. Go check out Gourmet, The Ending Quest. Check out their Gothen, Stream from the Heavens, and the Phantom Yogg-Sagoth demo. And get into some of Vokin and you pretty much have, well, also Goat Lord. You gotta get into some Goat Lord. If, if you like Worm, you like Goat Lord and you don't even know it yet, <laughs> but you will. Like as soon as you listen to it, you'll be like, oh, that's where that comes from. And it's just, hails the Phantom Slaughter, man. Like, sick fucking guy. Speaking of which, in case you missed the Gloom Lord cassette. Go get the Glow in the Dark reissue. The thing looks fucking awesome. Phantom Slaughter sent me a picture of it. I was like, yo, that's gnarly. But I have like a, the ice blue one. But if you're a fan of Funeral Doom, or even if you're new to the genre, like you can start with Disembowelment. It's a very, to me, as gnarly as disembowelment are, you can easily get into their vibe and stuff and read the lyrics and feel something. And I feel the same way with the Vulcan. So check out Shades of Night Descending and go down that Funeral Doom rabbit hole. Check out bands like Thor's Hammer on Southern Lord Records. They're fucking amazing. Check out Burning Witch. Crippled Lucifer, like that recording right there was one that really got me into Funeral Doom. A Sonder, a Clarion Call. Wow. Like seriously, wow. And last night I played on the live stream this four-way split. Ah, fuck. Well, the four burials split on Parasitic Records with like Mournful Congregation, Loss, Odasanki, and uh, Orthodox. I played it last night, but I fucking forget if I put it away or not. It's kind 
the hard to here it is. Cause this has four of the best funeral doom bands in the game. Well, just four of the best heaviest bands around on it. So you can't really go wrong here. Odisank, Lost Orthodox, and Mournful Congregation. Fucking awesome. And Parasitic has copies of this available right now. So I would get one because once this is gone, it's probably going to be gone forever. And this is a massive double LP. You get each band's lyrics. It's just fucking great. And like the Mournful Congregation song was written, music and lyrics, 1995 to 96, but wasn't recorded until 2007. Again, Funeral Doom takes time. And it's one of those things, like you gotta be patient sometimes. Like you might have a riff go on for like six minutes and then it kicks in and you need a little, like you really do, you need patience to be really, really into Funeral Doom, I think. If not, you're gonna be missing out on a lot of the elements that make it stand out from the rest of Doomy subgenres. And that's why I really feel like Shades of Night Descending needed to get some more attention here than it already has. And, you know, this helped launch a lot of bands' careers and when it comes to American Funeral Doom, I feel like Evoken are pretty much on the top of the pile of heavy fucking doomy, gloomy goodness. Shades of Night Descending on Dread Records. Thank you, Nicholas Carpenter, for making this video possible. And thank you to Evoken for making some of the saddest, heaviest music in the world and also just look at this gorgeous cassette fuck yeah but as always thanks for watching you fucking rule Hells.